Please hit like and subscribe. It lets myself and YouTube know you're enjoying these videos. Welcome to Mars or Bust. I'm Spaceman Dave and welcome to episode 13, Protecting Starship from Micrometeoroids. Today we're going to look at how we can protect Starship from micrometeoroids. Yes, micrometeoroids. A micrometeorite is a small meteor that has gone into the Earth's atmosphere. A meteoroid has not made it into the Earth's atmosphere yet. Some of these can be as small as a grain of sand, as large as a BB, but they can do a lot of damage when they hit something up in space. They travel at speeds from 7 to 40 miles per second, 11 to 72 kilometers per second. That's like 15,000 miles per hour. Isn't that about how fast Elon said the new Tesla Roadsters will be? That just shows how much fun those little micrometeoroids are having shooting around up there in space. Yeah. Now this is what some of the slower, smaller, sand grain sized ones can do. That's the meteoroids, not the roadsters. Currently, there are over 21,000 trackable objects in Earth's orbit that are two inches or larger. They've done some testing and ran some simulation to determine what would happen if the ISS was hit by a micrometeoroid. Okay, so you take a chunk of aluminum like this and you hit it with a two ounce half inch diameter projectile like this traveling at 28,000 kilometers per hour shot out of something that looks like this, you end up with this. Just look at that shock wave traveling through that. When it's all done, your chunk of aluminum looks like this. And no, guys, they did not shoot a banana in it. This is for scale. So, in short, we do not want to be hit by this. And to have this happen. So, if we are ever hit by one of those, we need some protection to keep something really drastic from happening. Well, they've tried a lot of things, and one would think a piece of Kevlar would do the trick. This is what happened when they tested that. You see, the fastest bullets travel at about 1,800 miles an hour, where, like we said, the micrometeoroids travel at about 15,000 miles per hour. In other words, that Kevlar didn't stand a chance. Back in 1947, Fred L. Whipple came up with the idea of a Whipple shield. The principle behind a Whipple shield is to have multiple layers that an item has to pass through. The idea was that every time the meteor had to pass through another layer, it lost some of its energy. The idea was sound, but they had to come up with a way to make it thinner. Now here's a projectile passing through multiple pieces of steel. It's an artillery shell, but the principle is the same. Every time it passes through a layer, it loses a little bit of its kinetic energy. By the time it gets to the end, it has very little left. Now the idea with a Whipple shield is to try to break up the meteor before it gets to the next layer. Like in this photo, the meteor passed through the first layer, but broke up before it got to the second. Okay, so now the question is, how do we implement this into a spacecraft? The best thing for a spacecraft is to protect the inner hull itself. It's preferable that the inner hull has no damage at all. So we want the outer protective layers to take up the brunt of the force. Depending upon what this micrometeoroid is made out of, will determine on whether we're able to break it up before it reaches the hull, 
or to try to just slow it down. The other issue is, if we break it up, will any of the smaller pieces have enough force to penetrate the hull once they get through the second layer? Because of this, they came up with the idea of placing another material between the layers, something that would absorb the shock and maybe catch the pieces. With this idea, they came up with what is called a stuffed Whipple shield. In this type of application, the material between the layers is either a very dense foam, or this is where they use the Kevlar or a combination of both. All these materials are fabricated into a panel and then applied to the outside of the ship. The same idea can be applied to either a moon base or a station on Mars. Depending upon the risk and the placement location, these can be made up in multiple layers using different types of materials. Now I'd like to take a moment to introduce our new patron, Anthony Mann. Welcome and thank you, Anthony. I'm absolutely thrilled to have you with us. I'd also like to thank all my other patrons who, without your help, I wouldn't be here. Thanks to you and all the other subscribers, we hit a thousand plus subs on the last video. And all in just a little over three months, I'm so thrilled. Okay, back to Starship Shielding for a minute. I can't wait for the day when we can do it just like this. We've detected an incoming meteor at 3 o'clock. Shields up! Captain, it was deflected. We're safe. Captain, you saved the ship. You're my hero. <laughs> oh, yeah.